Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So I finally found the answer as to why do women wear panties. Well, according to local law, a manhole has to be covered when not in use. <laughs> so I met a blind girl at a bar and we instantly hit it off. She asked me back to her place, so when we got there we started getting it on and suddenly she said, that's the biggest pecker I've ever laid my hands on. I said, stop pulling my leg. <laughs> so Ryan rents an apartment in New York and goes to the lobby to put his name on the group mailbox. While he's there, an attractive young lady comes out of the apartment next to the mailboxes wearing a robe. Ryan smiles at her and she strikes up a conversation as they chat. Her robe slips open, revealing that she isn't wearing anything underneath. Poor Ryan breaks out in a sweat, struggling to maintain eye contact. After a few minutes, she places her hand on his arm and says, Let's go into my apartment. I hear someone coming. He follows her into the apartment, and after she closes the door, she leans against it, letting her robe fall off completely. Standing there nude, she purrs. What would you say is my best feature? Flustered and embarrassed, Ryan stammers, clears his throat a few times, and finally squeaks out. Oh, it's got to be your ears. Astounded, she responds. Why my ears? Look at these breasts. They're full, don't sag, and they're 100% natural. My buns are firm, have no cellulite and my skin is flawless. Why on earth would you say my ears are my best feature? Clearing his throat once more, Ryan stammers outside when you said you heard someone coming. Well, that was me. <laughs> so, a farmer was giving his wife last minute instructions before heading to town for some business. That fellow from Semitol will be here this afternoon to inseminate one of the cows, he said. I've hung a nail by the right stall, so you'll know which one I want him to impregnate. Confident that even his mentally challenged wife could understand, the farmer left for town. Later that afternoon, the inseminator arrived, and the wife took him out to the barn, guiding him directly to the stall with the nail. There's the nail. So this must be the cow, she told him. The inseminator asked, what's the nail for? She replied, I guess it's to hang up your pants. <laughs> so, Patrick O'Malley raised his beer and proudly declared, here's to spending the rest of my life between the legs of my wife. Naturally, he took home the top prize for the best toast of the night. Later that evening, while in bed, he turned to his wife and said, Mary, I won the prize for the best toast of the night. Curious? Mary asked. Oh, really, Patrick? And what was your toast? Thinking quickly, he replied, here's to spending the rest of my life sitting in church beside my wife. Mary smiled and said, oh, that's lovely, dear. The next day, Mary bumped into one of Patrick's drinking buddies on the street. With a grin, the man said, Did you hear about your husband winning the best toast in the bar the other night, Mary? Oh, I did, she replied. But I was a bit surprised. He's only been there twice. Once he fell asleep, and the other time I had to drag him in by the ears. <laughs> So the first nun approaches the gates of heaven, and God asks if she has anything to declare. She replies, Yes, I once saw a man's pecker. God says, Go wash your eyes in the holy fountain and enter the gates of heaven. The second nun steps forward, and God asks her the same question. She responds, Yes, I once touched a man's pecker. God says, Go wash your hands in the holy fountain and enter the gates of heaven. 
Suddenly, the third and fourth nuns start arguing. God asks, what's the matter? The third nun replies, I want to gargle in the holy fountain before she sticks her butt in it. <laughs> so a big shot businessman had to spend a few days in the hospital. He was a nightmare for the nurses, bossing them around like they were his employees. Naturally, none of the staff wanted to deal with him, except for the head nurse. She was the only one who could handle him. One day, she walked into his room and said, I need to take your temperature. After grumbling for a while, he finally sighed, crossed his arms, and opened his mouth. Oh, I'm sorry, the nurse said. But for this reading, I can't use an oral thermometer. More grumbling followed, but eventually, the man rolled over and bared his behind. After inserting the thermometer, the nurse calmly told him, I need to grab something. Just stay like that until I get back. She left the door wide open on her way out. He lay there, fuming as people passed by, laughing and whispering. Nearly an hour later, his doctor finally walked in. What's going on here? The doctor asked. Furious, the businessman snapped. What's the matter, Doc? Haven't you ever seen someone getting their temperature taken? The doctor paused, looked at him, and said yes, but never with a daffodil. <laughs> so an 80-year-old man was having his annual checkup, and the doctor asked how he was feeling. I've never been better, the man boasted. I've got an 18-year-old bride who's pregnant with my child. What do you think about that? The doctor thought for a moment, then said, Let me tell you a story. I knew a guy who was an avid hunter, never missed a season. But one day, he was in such a rush that he accidentally grabbed his umbrella instead of his gun. The doctor continued, So, he's out in the woods, and suddenly, a grizzly bear shows up right in front of him. He raised his umbrella, pointed it at the bear, and squeezed the handle. The doctor paused, then asked, Do you know what happened next? Dumbfounded, the old man replied. No, what? The bear dropped dead right in front of him, said the doctor. That's impossible, the old man exclaimed. Someone else must have shot that bear. Exactly, the doctor replied. That's kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> so a man goes to his doctor's office for his annual physical. After the checkup, the doctor comes out and says, I'm sorry, Bill, but we've discovered you have a condition that only gives you about six weeks to live. But doctor, Bill replied, I feel great. I haven't felt this good in years. This can't be true. Isn't there anything I can do? After a moment, the doctor said, Well, you could start going to that new health spa down the street and take a mud bath every day. Bill perked up and asked, And that will cure me? No, replied the doctor, But it will get you used to the dirt. <laughs> so three nuns died and went to heaven. When they reached the pearly gates, St. Peter was there to greet them. He said to the nuns, Before you can enter, each of you must answer one question correctly. St. Peter approached the first nun and asked, Who was the first man God created? The first nun confidently replied, Oh, that's easy, it's Adam. The trumpets sounded, the gates opened, and St. Peter said, You may enter. Next, St. Peter went to the second nun and asked, Who was the first woman God created? The second nun smiled and said, Oh, that's easy. It's Eve. Again, the trumpet sounded, the gates opened, and St. Peter said, You may enter. Finally, St. Peter approached the third nun and asked, What were the first words Eve said to Adam? The third nun paused deep in thought, then looked at St. Peter and said, Oh, that's a hard one. The trumpet sounded, 
The gates opened, and St. Peter said, You may enter. <laughs> so an Englishman, a Scotsman, and an Irishman were all invited to give speeches at a Deaf Society event. Eager to make an impression on their audience, each one wanted to outdo the other. The Englishman went first, and to the surprise of his colleagues, he started by rubbing his chest and then his groin. When he finished, the Scotsman and Irishman asked him what he was doing. Well, he explained, by rubbing my chest, I indicated breasts, meaning ladies, and by rubbing my groin, I indicated balls, meaning gentlemen. So, my speech began, ladies and gentlemen, not to be outdone, the Scotsman thought he'd go one better. As he approached the podium, he made an antler symbol with his fingers above his head, then rubbed his chest and groin just like the Englishman. When he finished, his colleagues asked what that was all about. Well, he explained, by imitating antlers and then rubbing my chest and groin, I started my speech with dear ladies and gentlemen, determined to top both of them. The Irishman went up to the podium. He made the antler symbol, rubbed his chest, then his groin, and then started jacking off. When he finished, the others asked him, what on earth was that supposed to be? Well, he said by imitating antlers, rubbing my chest, then my groin, and finally jacking off, I started my speech with dear ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure. <laughs> So, a Japanese doctor said, Medicine in my country is so advanced that we can take a kidney out of one man, put it in another, and have him looking for work in six weeks. A German doctor replied, That's nothing. We can take a lung out of one person, put it in another, and have him looking for work in four weeks. A British doctor chimed in, In my country, Medicine is so advanced that we can take half a heart out of one person, put it in another, and have both of them looking for work in two weeks. Not to be outdone, a Texas doctor said, you guys are way behind. We took a man with no brains out of Texas, put him in the White House, and now half the country is looking for work. <laughs> so one Sunday morning, William burst into the living room and said, Dad, Mom, I have some great news. I'm getting married to the most beautiful girl in town. She lives just a block away, and her name is Susan. After dinner, William's dad took him aside and said, Son, I need to talk to you. Your mother and I have been married for 30 years. She's a wonderful wife, but she hasn't brought much excitement to the bedroom so I've been with other women from time to time. Susan is actually your half-sister, and I'm afraid you can't marry her. Heartbroken, William eventually started dating again after eight months. A year later, he came home proudly announcing, Diane said yes, we're getting married in June. Once again, his father insisted on another private conversation and broke the sad news. William, Diane is your half-sister, too. I'm really sorry about this. Furious, William decided to go to his mother for help. Dad has done so much harm. I guess I'm never going to get married. Every time I fall in love, Dad tells me the girl is my half-sister. His mother shook her head and said, Don't pay any attention to what he says, dear. He's not really your father. <laughs> so once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a beautiful queen with voluptuous breasts. Richard, the dragon slayer, knew that trying to touch them would mean certain death if caught. One day, Richard confided his secret desire to his friend, Horatio, the physician, the king's chief doctor. Horatio, intrigued said he could arrange for Richard to fulfill his desire. 
but it would cost him 1,000 gold coins. Without hesitation, Richard agreed. The next day, Horatio made a batch of itching powder and discreetly sprinkled a small amount into the queen's brassiere while she was bathing. Soon after she dressed, the itching began and became unbearable. Summoned to the royal chambers to address the issue, Horatio informed the king and queen that only a special saliva, if applied for four hours, could cure this kind of itch. He explained that tests showed only Richard the Dragon Slayer's saliva would work. The king immediately summoned Richard. Horatio quickly gave him the antidote for the itching powder, which Richard put into his mouth. For the next four hours, Richard passionately worked on the queen's magnificent breasts, curing her of the terrible itch. The queen's discomfort was finally relieved and Richard left the chambers satisfied and hailed as a hero. Later that day, back in his chamber, Richard found Horatio waiting to collect his 1,000 gold coins. With his obsession satisfied and knowing Horatio could never tell the king, Richard laughed and told him to get lost. The next day, Horatio slipped a massive dose of the same itching powder into the king's underwear. The king immediately summoned Richard the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> mm. <laughs>